So today was the first official day of E3 2021, and people were looking for a return to form for E3. Of course, last year we didn't have one. We had some game announcements that happened over the summer, but to have proper presentations definitely feels very good. And to kick things off, we had Ubisoft Forward, which was a 60-minute presentation showcasing some games coming out across various platforms from Ubisoft. Now, they did start things out with a bit of a introductory sort of thing to showcase what new DLC and sort of season passes were coming to games that already existed that lasted about an hour long that was the pre-show of it and then we got into the meat and potatoes of ubisoft's e3 presentation and how was it well it was it was something so today we're going to talk about ubisoft forward what i like from the presentation what i didn't really like from the presentation and could mario save it so if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like and share the video because we're going to be doing lots of E3 coverage on the channel. But let's talk about Ubisoft Forward and my thoughts on it. So we started off the presentation with Rainbow Six Extraction, and I'm so old that I remember when Rainbow Six was like based on realism and based on books written by Tom Clancy, but obviously Ubisoft is just getting everything they can out of that Tom Clancy license and just making, I don't know, some absolutely crazy things with it. Now, the big thing with this game is that it's infective creatures that are, you know, sort of like aliens that are taking over a somewhat post-apocalyptic world, kind of like an apocalypse is actually happening at the time of when this is happening. It looks kind of cool honestly but i do feel it's a bit over generic you know i feel like games like this have been done to death by this point in time you know aliens invade you get up with a squad of people once again in this game you have a squad of one to three different players and a co-op experience you're teaming up to take out these aliens instead of teaming up and trying to fight against each other like in previous rainbow six games and the game will actually feature cross-platform play so if you're playing it on the pc the xbox or the playstation variety of consoles you'll be able to play the game anywhere now, it started out with a CG trailer, and I was like, okay, you know, the CG trailer looks kind of cool, and then they showed the gameplay for the game, which, surprise, surprise, you know, it didn't look nearly as good as a CGI trailer, like, at all, but that's more than likely because this is a cross-generational game that will be coming out on the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox One, Series X, and the PC. Now, the main thing about Rainbow Six games is that they're kind of slower paced because there's a lot of stealth stuff in them, maybe not so much a game like Siege because that's a multiplayer game that's based on taking out other people but since you're working as a team it's kind of slower paced and i guess that's kind of weird to me because you're taking out alien parasites and i don't know it just doesn't really look like a game for me i don't think it looks bad but it just kind of looks like call of duty zombies but a bit stealthier and they also spent a large chunk of their presentation on this game like nearly 15 minutes by showing off a cgi trailer talking with people involved in the game and then showing the gameplay for the game now the game does come out on september 16th so if you're interested in rainbow six extraction you might want to pre-order it or something like that for me personally though i will be passing on this game next up rocksmith is coming back with rocksmith plus for the pc now i've been playing guitar for like 20 years now but it is always nice to learn how to like be better or learn like certain techniques or certain songs and this actually looks kind of interesting it looks very interactive and it's even community based which i think is a very smart thing there's a bunch of different modes you could do it by notes you could do it by tablature which is something that if you play electric guitar you're going to be more involved with the tablature side of things than more so than notes it's going to be available for acoustic or electric electric and you don't need any additional equipment to play this game you actually can just plug something into your phone and you just need a phone and you can plug something into your phone and then it interacts with the game itself which i think is really cool like i said you can do acoustic or electric which is nice i, I wonder if there's going to be some like a lot of metal stuff they said that there would be like sub genres of metal because i'm actually been playing an eight string recently so i'm always learning trying to learn like new ways and new chords and new things to play with eight string guitars so i would find that interesting you know i'm kind of interested in this i am interested in the pricing of it though because this definitely looks like a games as a service thing you know something that ubisoft allegedly isn't all that interested in you know but now it seems like they are interested in it so i will be interested in the pricing but this did look kind of cool a game called writer's republic was up next which evidently was talked about last year and is in beta and i i can't say i've ever heard of this game it's like a weird snowboarding and biking sort of game with like other elements thrown into it it's very over the top with a bunch of different mission types as well 
I will say the variety looks kind of nice and the game itself doesn't look too bad but once again I definitely feel like this is a games as a service game more so than a complete experience honestly like Rainbow Six Extraction and Rocksmith Plus were pretty much games as a service thing as well with subscription services DLC season passes lots of other stuff and you know you have heard that Ubisoft is moving into this direction and considering that the first three games that they show off were games that are in this direction you know that's obviously what they're going to be doing in the future for better or worse I do think that Riders Republic looks kind of cool but I'm just not sure how much game is actually going to be involved with the main game and how much stuff is going to be additional stuff now this game will be coming out on September 2nd I don't know what platforms it's coming out on they didn't say so maybe it's a PC game maybe it's a console game as well if it is a console game I might end up checking it out and then the presentation got honestly pretty weird because like I said at the start of the video they started out this show with an hour pre-show showing updates coming to already available games that are out on the market and all of the games that they've shown thus far are not currently available on the market so you would think that maybe there'd be like one little thing about a current game but no they actually started talking about current games that are available on the market with additional content so the first game was Rainbow Six Siege which is like six years old and it's getting new content I mean it, that's cool it doesn't really make me want to get into the game or anything like that it should have been on the pre-show that was kind of the whole point of the pre-show there is cross-platform play coming between xbox and playstation in 2022 i guess um that's kind of cool you know the one guy that was talking had an interesting beard that was probably the most interesting thing about this for me the trailer didn't make me want to play rainbow six siege so it was kind of a moot point and then they showed a sizzle reel for the aforementioned previous games that we had just talked about that are already available on the market i will say that teenage mutant ninja turtles joining brawl Hala is actually kind of interesting you know I think the sprites that they used for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles themselves actually look really good they look like more so the original characters and that modern sort of stuff for honor and the crew too are evidently still alive like that that was news to me and once again I I don't know why they're doing the sizzle reel but hey you know you got to talk about it and then we got the bombshell announcement one game that everyone was looking forward to just dance just dance is back with just dance 2021 the presentation is saved they even got the legendary Todger call to be in just dance 2022 now, I don't know who the hell Todger Call is, but I mean, maybe he's a big deal with the kids or something like that. They spent a lot of time talking with Todrick about his song. That wasn't something that I would listen to, but hey, if that's your sort of bop, you know, go along with it. You know, that's cool with me. There's going to be 40 new songs in Just Dance 2022, and it's not coming to the Wii. The Wii is finally dead with the Just Dance games. This game will be coming out on November 4th, and honestly, I could not care less. And then we got another update about a game that's already released. It's been out for quite a while, and that is Assassin's creed valhalla once again like there's no issue with adding new content to games but you literally had a showcase about this before your show and now this is in your main show so yeah i i, I don't know man it was just kind of weird i feel like this presentation could it have been a lot shorter it didn't need to be an hour long like 20 30 minutes cut out some of the fluff but yeah there's new quests new game modes expansions and more coming to assassin's creed valhalla some of it is paid some of it is free stuff and there's more expansions actually coming in 2020 22 as well so we might not be getting a new assassin's creed game for quite a while but it definitely shows off that mentality that i've been talking about of ubisoft kind of treating their games as a service with a lot of additional stuff to purchase thus elongating the cycle of these games which i don't necessarily think is a bad decision but it will be interesting to see if it brings in new players and how many people it retains that already picked up assassin's creed valhalla then they showed off some TV stuff and like movie stuff. I don't care. I went out and I had a cigarette. I took a whiz because I, I don't care about this. It had been like 45 minutes of this presentation at this point. And you know, I need a little bit of a bathroom break. Far Cry 6 was up next. This game just got a new trailer recently, so that kind of takes the sales out of doing another trailer. It was building up the story of the game, which, I mean, to be fair, the Far Cry stories as of late have been pretty interesting, but I honestly feel like they should have shown gameplay instead of just story elements from the game, because I don't know, that was kind of weird. They actually didn't show any gameplay whatsoever, so this could have just been like a random YouTube trailer drop, I feel. I don't think the game looks bad or anything, but it definitely looks like Far Cry has sort of stopped evolving since, like, what, Far Cry 3? Like, it's just sort of been those main sort of mainline games that have that same sort of world and feeling to them just with different characters and different settings but i will say it is kind of cool that they're going to add in 
previous Far Cry villains into the game, and you could see things from their perspective. It's sort of more over the top, but it looks like it's only going to be available through the season pass, which, why are we talking about a season pass before the game is even out? Like, I hate stuff like that. It just feels so, like, cheap and degrading. Like, hey, we're already working on stuff for the main game, even though we're not going to include it in the main game, so you're going to have to pay us more money. Like, I don't know. I just don't really like stuff like that. But Far Cry 6, you know, that's cool. And then finally... Finally, we had a game that was actually a surprise, but Nintendo ruined the surprise earlier in the day by leaking it on their website, and that is Mario and Rabbids Spark of Hope, which is a new game in the Mario and Rabbids franchise that, yes, Nintendo put it up on their website and then pulled it down, but I mean, it's the internet, so it's not going to be completely gone. Now, this game will be taking place within a multitude of areas. Instead of just the Mushroom Kingdom, you're going to be in a huge galaxy. Now, obviously, Mario and Rabbids, the first game, was very successful for Ubisoft, so it's not a huge surprise that this game would get a sequel they showed off a cgi trailer which the tone of it was kind of dark and i actually kind of dug that there's like i said a huge galaxy to save there's going to be new characters added into the game such as rabid Lo rosalina and other characters you are trying to take down a main new villain called cursa who's obviously going to be very different there's new allies in the game called sparks hence the spark of hope name that actually help you in the game that are a combo of rabbits and lumas kind of put together there's going to be new gameplay mechanics added in the game as well including an easier mode for a accessibility and the game will be coming out in 2022 they showed off some gameplay from this game as well and honestly i think it looks pretty damn good like especially for a nintendo switch game like the clarity on it and just the environments the different sort of weather effects varied environments as well great use of colors a very sharp looking game and definitely was the big highlight of this show it was the final game that they showed and then eve's gilmont basically like thank people for supporting ubisoft and that wrapped up the show so was Mario and Rabbids Spark of Hope enough to save this Ubisoft forward presentation? No, like this is what I don't understand. I was critical of Summer Games Fest because I feel like one game doesn't save a show. And for a lot of people, Elden Ring was such a big announcement and an awesome announcement to them that it saved two hours of pretty much nonsense before that. And I feel with this presentation, we had the same sort of thing. It was like 50 minutes of nonsense and just games that didn't look all that interesting and games that we already knew existed. And then we saw the new game and it's like, yeah, that was cool. That was awesome. A great way to end the show, but it doesn't make up for the other portions of the show that were just so lackadaisical and just so drawn out we knew these games already existed and to see them was a nice thing but we didn't get any new surprises ubisoft has so many franchises franchises like rayman that just never seem to get any love and it definitely seems like ubisoft is just going in this more cookie cutter direction instead of doing more interesting games like starlink immortals phoenix rising and of course the mario and rabbids game honestly i did not like this presentation really you know mario and rabbids was definitely very cool to see there but but beyond that, there was just nothing really that interested me all that much. It just looked like more recycled franchises without doing anything really new from Ubisoft. But maybe you feel differently about it. So let me know how you felt about this presentation in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, like I said, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be doing a ton of E3 coverage of all the big presentations. I'll be giving my thoughts on it as well. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.